What's up, everybody? This is Derek Kirby with the Dallas Prospect, back from a short hiatus here. I've been watching, I've been quietly seething over the state of the Dallas Mavericks because, yeah, things are bad. Like, objectively bad right now. This team has only won twice in its last nine games. And with their latest loss, a 97-90, really, that makes it look way better than it was. This was a pretty good clubbing until the fourth quarter by the Memphis Grizzlies, who, by the way, are without Ja Morant. Yes, the Mavericks were without uh, Porzingis and without Luka. But the problems with this team cannot be overlooked. It can't keep sitting in silence because this team is broken. We've reached that point now where we can say that. This team is broken. It is Luka Doncic or nothing. Because the roster composition is at best questionable. And a, there are a lot of reasons for this. But, and, I, and I've heard this said, uh, I think Mavs Moneyball's podcast had a good explanation for this. This roster, as we've said before, has not changed in three years. It's a roster that was built for Rick Carlisle, who had a history of taking guys that weren't big money players and getting more value out of them than other teams generally do. You saw guys like Brendan Wright make a whole bunch of money after playing in Dallas, uh, go off elsewhere. Even Samuel Dallenbear, they mentioned, was able to hang on just a little longer in the league because of his stint with Dallas and what he showed he could do, even though that was really only what he could do with Carlisle and in the Mavericks system. Well, now you got Jason Kidd as your coach, but you didn't really change your roster. And you might want to say like, oh, well, you have all these guys that are supposed to be great shooters, but they're just, gosh darn it, they're just not making shots. They're, once the shots start falling, no, no, no. It's more than that. First of all, the team, yeah, it's not making its shots, but they're not, they're not a great team they don't have enough guys that can create it's Luca or nothing yeah Brunson's had a good year but he's still not everything you need him to be he's still not a guy that can consistently knock down three-point shots and the team as a whole just can't get it going on the offensive end Reggie Bullock is shooting terribly Sterling Brown looks horrifically bad you have these guys that were supposed to be their big acquisitions that don't get any opportunities and then you look at how they've built themselves before. I've said this for years. The Mavericks have never taken the draft in the Mark Cuban era seriously. They did for maybe two years. Dennis Smith Jr., which was still, for how they used him, a swing and a miss. And then Luka Doncic, who, if you listen to Harlebo, didn't even have them have Luka as their top player in the draft. He wasn't number one on their board, according to Bob Harlebo. So, yeah. It's not Bob Harlebo, by the way, but I digress. So, yeah. They don't know what they're doing. The difference between them and the Grizzlies, who have won like three or four games in a row since they lost Ja Morant for a little bit, is that the Grizzlies take the draft seriously. And... The most pressing example that everyone's pointing to, and rightly so, is Desmond Bain, who lit up the Mavericks for 29 points. Why is that relevant? Because Josh Green went at pick 18. Bain went at, what, 30? 31? It's, it's unbelievable. This was a guy that was a four-year starter, four years at TCU, efficient, physical, talented player, played not even an hour, maybe 40 minutes from your home court for four years. And depending on who you ask, the Mavericks didn't even really have him on their radar. Meanwhile, he goes for 29 points, and he was the difference in the game the other night. Oh, no, it's cool, though. We got Josh Green. Oh, except uh, Josh Green didn't play in that game. And uh, by the way, in case you're wondering, uh, yeah. Desmond Bain was aware of that after the game. Quote, no question. I've always thrived on that. I mean, I'm not a guy that needs a bunch of motivation, but I'm definitely motivated to play against organizations that passed on me. I mean, there's 29 of them. 
I went 30th. So every game, especially ones like Dallas, the ones that I thought would be good fits and were showing me interest throughout the pre-draft process right in my own backyard. I love where I'm at, but if I were number two, if there were a number two, probably would have been here. So I'm just glad to get the win tonight. Let me just say that. He also said, yeah, I don't even know if Josh Green played. He went 18. He went before me. I don't even know if he played tonight. Yeah. Yeah. If you have a game, let, let's look at it this way. As bad as the roster is right now for the Mavericks, if you have a game without Luka and KP, pencil it in as a loss. You can. It's that easy. In fact, if you have a game without Luka, you can almost do that right now. And yet you can't find minutes for Josh Green. The guy's got 14 points on the season. Like four threes. That's that's what he's got. How many, let me look, how many specifically threes did Bain knock down for them? He knocked down four threes in that game alone. 12 of 20 from the field, 29, 9, and 2 in 34 minutes. What are we doing? We can't, like, for, uh, for an organization that swears that it's trying to build the best team it can around Luka and has known since summer of 2019 what it had to do. It has done pitifully little. And it tries to sell us on these ideas of continuity. Oh, we're keeping the same core together. It's a core of guys you're asking to play over their own heads. And even, you know, we talk a lot about the Seth Curry trade trying to get Josh Richardson in here instead of Curry. It's like, all right, well, we're giving up a little bit on the offensive end, but defensively we're going to address that because we don't have enough quality defenders on this team. Well, then it bottoms out. It's terrible. Okay. Now it's the, I get it. That was a different coaching staff and everything, but it bottoms out. It does not work. And so now you've lost the offensive firepower and you have to keep going back to the drawing board. Well, now we're trying it with Reggie Bullock, and guess what? It looks a lot like it did with Green, or excuse me, with uh, Richardson. That's not good. That's not good at all. You can't get any guys in free agency because the only guys you're willing to get are the guys that you think are the premium maximum talent, and you can't convince them to come to you. You haven't been able to convince them to come to you for more than a decade. You squandered the final years of Dirk post-championship despite all of the goodwill and leeway he gave you taking those discounts. You wasted it. You've wasted three years of Luka. Now, KP, yeah, that was a swing for the fences kind of thing. The only thing this franchise does if it gets anything right, it seems like, is some of these trades. They're bold when it comes to that. Although they haven't done anything since the KP trade of note. That's just kind of the the fallout. Hardaway Jr., I mean, there was a story in the playoffs last year that the KP trade was really the Tim Hardaway Jr. trade because that's who they were calling about. And then they found out KP could be available too. And it was like, oh, hey, cool. Let's go ahead and explore that. But that was the arrangement. That was what they were working with. That falls into your lap. And Hardaway's a nice player. But... They're so set in their rotations that even on a night without Luka and without KP, you got Hardaway coming in for Dallas off the bench. Yeah, he had 29-7. and seven. That's cool. But it's a game where you really needed more from him. Jalen Brunson, 7 of 21 from the field. Has not shot the three well recently. This team has so many glaring problems. And the fact that they can't evaluate what they're looking at in free agency they have these really set ideas like let's consider this who are the guys now i'm not looking closely at kyle lowry right now but the last guy that they were convinced they had until boston made a surprise move that opened up cap space for him to go there instead was kimba walker they were convinced they were going to get kimba walker to pair with luca and kp but then boston happened and kimba wanted to stay on the east coast so he went to Boston instead. Kimball Walker's been washed. 
He's not. He's like completely out of the Knicks rotation now. That's where that's at. That was the guy they were willing to spend max money on. And one of their last opportunities to spend max money. It's it's unbelievable the misevaluation that comes with something like that. And they can't build through the draft. They had three picks in the top, what, 36? Josh Green at 18. Can't even get minutes in a night where Luka and KP aren't playing. That's 14 points on the season for a team that's basically 500. Is it basically 500 or are they straight up 500 at this point? The Mavericks are straight up 500 right now. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. That might be sixth in the West, but that doesn't excuse what they are. That doesn't excuse the problems that we've seen through 22 games. They don't look at some of these other guys, some of these other people that would help them. They express, like, we have no interest in DeMar DeRozan or Alonzo Ball or whatever. These guys go off and they star elsewhere. And it's like, oh, yeah, no, cool. You you couldn't find any use for them here, huh? All right, yeah, cool. All right, all right cool. Cool, 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 cool. So as this team neglects the draft, you, you take Josh Green and... You know, I, I know uh, Kirk over at Mavs Moneyball, the editor-in-chief, was uh, ranting about Josh Green being hyped as this athletic freak. He's, he's not. Like, he's a good athlete, but it, it's not some crazy otherworldly thing that you look at and it's like, oh, just wait till you see what this guy can do. He apparently can't do much of anything if he can't find his way on the floor in a game like last uh, the other night. So... It's bad, man. It is really, really bad trying to figure it out. And your other two picks you had in that top 36 or whatever, Hinton and Tyrell Terry, who, by the way, I really wanted Tyrell Terry to work out. Not only are they not on your team anymore, they're not in the league anymore. They're done. Nobody has picked them up. Hinton had a couple opportunities, I think, with Chicago and Houston. Houston tanking Houston? And they were like, nah, we're good. That's where it's at. The the in the ineptitude of evaluating the draft, of taking it seriously, takes out the best manner of building your team. If you don't have much cap resources, like Luca and KP now on max deals and Hardaway on a huge money deal too. If you don't have cap resources to make those kind of moves anymore, not that you were having a whole lot of success doing them anyway, using your same roster building philosophy you used with Rick Carlisle despite a new leadership, which tells you it all just runs through Mark Cuban anyway. You're not taking the draft, the one manner and avenue of building a team you have at your disposal when you're strapped for cash. And now you're more strapped for cash moving forward. What are you doing? Like, this team doesn't work. Jason Kidd said it himself uh, earlier this week after one of their games. Like, oh, the team as is, it's not built for defense. We're not built as a defensive team. Well, Jason, I hear what you're saying, and I agree. I see it. But I'm also here to tell you, you're not a good offensive team either. You've had maybe three or four games this year where things have fired on all cylinders. The guys are hitting their outside shots, and people go, see? This team's good. This team can be good. Any team can have nights where they're going to hit a lot of their shots. It will happen. With the way floors are spaced now in the modern NBA, you're going to have those games where you'll get your looks, and if your team is hitting on all cylinders, you'll look great for one night question is can you do it consistently they can't they can't and it's not even just a matter of like when luca's there because even when luca's there it's a regressed offense from last year and that was a regressed offense from the year before this team's problems run deep it is to the very core of its philosophy and how they construct their roster you cannot 
continue to say our mindset is continuity with the same guys. Dorian Finney-Smith was literally saying after a game the other night, oh, it's hard. You know, people take it for granted. It's tough when you got a new locker room. You don't have a new locker room. It's the same roster, Dorian. What are you talking about? Bullock and more? That counts as a completely new roster? No, come on, man. It's... The way they approach their roster construction is still in line with Rick Carlisle. Only now, they don't even have Carlisle and his coaching staff, who implemented a good offensive system, to run it. And that's not to say that I don't think Igor is good or that he can be good for this team. It's just you don't have the right pieces to run it. You're trying to run a different system with a system or with a roster that was built to run somebody else's system who's no longer here. The parts don't fit for what you're trying to do. If you really were trying to sell us on the fact that it's a new era and it's a new coaching staff and a new philosophy, well, then you change the damn roster. You make different decisions in how you acquire players and then utilize them. The Mavericks... Yeah, people will point to an NBA.com stat that says, oh, the Mavericks generate uh, among the best in the open looks or the quality looks. It's a flawed stat because they're last in the league at shots at the rim. They don't get quality looks. And then to make matters worse, they don't make the shots they do get. They are shooting poorly from three, poorly in the mid-range, and they're not even defending well. This is a regression. It's objectively not fun watching the team right now. Now, I'm not going to cry and say like, oh, I'm just not going to watch the team. Like, I cover the team. I'm going to do this. I'm a glutton for punishment, I guess, because I'm going to do this. Like, this is just the nature of what it is right now. But what it is, is not working. And if your mindset, if you're the Mavericks and your mindset was, we're going to bank this entire season, year one of Luka, uh, you know, I know his, his extension and all that kicks in next year, but we're banking this season before that on the idea of healthy Luka and healthy KP, can they alone carry us to the second round? If that's what you're banking the whole damn season on, that is beyond flawed. You have to make multiple moves. Dorian Finney-Smith is a nice player. Would be great on certain teams that have a need for that guy. Maxi has moments. But there is so much of this roster that just does not have value. It just does not. The value they place on their own guys are, is so much greater than what they have. You can't trade Tim Hardaway Jr. for a, like, if, even if you wanted to look at it and say like, oh, if we had to make a move, obviously you can't really move KP because of the health thing. He's on pace to miss like 30 games or whatever again. Uh, and you're not going to trade Luca. So what about Tim Hardaway? What value does he have? Not first round value. You're not going to get that for him. So what are you looking at? What, what, what assets do you have? Contracts for Maxi and Dorian are great. Maxi's a little bit health issues the last couple of years, but Dorian's a nice player. He's also a very affordable contract. He's not a he's not a huge piece though. He's not like a guy that you look at and it seems like yes, we will sell the farm for this man. We will give you our second best player for a deal to acquire Dorian Finney Smith. No, no chance. No chance. None. If they don't do something drastic, if this whole season boils down to just try to get to the playoffs and see if a healthy Luka KP tandem can get you to the second round, it's a failure. I don't care. It's a failure because you need more than that. You, every moment you're wasting is crucial. Rick Carlisle is gone because Luca was helping apply some pressure that this isn't working, 
We need to make changes. They made changes. But then they didn't do anything with the changes. They changed the GM. They changed the coaching staff. And they kept the same pissing players. It doesn't work that way, man. It doesn't. You have the wrong guys running the system you want to run. And your inability to scout and take seriously processes like the draft for years, decades, haunts you. Because you could have had Desmond Bain, who looks like a great, great player. And Memphis has hit well on the draft in recent years. I think it was... uh, I mean, it might have been Kirk, again, from Mavs Moneyball, said, if you swapped Ja Morant and Luka Doncic right now, the Grizzlies are Western Conference Finals. Their roster is good. That's that's his assessment. I definitely think Luka on the Grizzlies makes them stupid good. But, you know, that's a team that understands, hey, man, we're not going to be able to get a lot of big-name free agents to come here. So uh, we better do this draft thing right. We better do our due diligence. Oh, look, we hit on one. Oh, look, we hit on another. Oh, hey, that's a good pickup too. Sweet. And then it all starts to work. It's amazing to me that Mark Cuban changed his entire philosophy post-championship on how to build the roster. He started becoming obsessed with the idea of building, like, a big three and getting the big fish and all that because he looked at like Oklahoma City and he was like, oh, okay. Young Durant, Westbrook, Harden. It was like 23, 23, and 21. Oh, that's going to be a threat for years and years, decades, that team. We got to do something. So he went balls out for Darren Williams and Dwight Howard to pair with Dirk. Never mind the optics of blowing up the championship team. That's what he went all in on. But it's weird to me that for someone who looked specifically at Oklahoma City and what he thought and feared they might be, they never did, that he missed the point. He looked at what they were, not how they came to be. The Oklahoma City thunder of Harden, Westbrook, and Durant came to be through the draft. Now, granted, those were lottery picks. Dallas doesn't play with that kind of scenario, not unless they literally can do nothing to stop it as was the case for several years, but I digress. Bad enough to be able to do that. You can't you can't neglect the draft and do that. And if you're going to say, "Well, man, it was pick 18. What are we going to get at 18?" That's a failure. That's like that's a fatalistic mindset. Now, maybe I am I feel like I'm channeling Kirk a little bit cuz I heard his pod 2 days ago and some of these points are starting to ring a bell as if like I know I'm not the first one to say that. Credit to Kirk. But the point is, you can't have that mindset when you're approaching how to build your team. You can't. You can find quality players. Say what you want about former Maverick Chandler Parsons. He was a second-round pick. For several years there, he was a very good second-round pick. You got a lot of value out of him. Now, did you overpay him? Sure. But for what Houston put into him in terms of investment did they no not at all not at all you have to just be aware of what you're doing you have to understand how you're building your roster and what channels are practical and what aren't the fact that you can't hit in free agency to save your life and then you're also going to willingly neglect the draft is garbage You're setting yourself up to fail. And the fact that Luka misses a game and you got to pencil it in as a loss, that's unforgivable. Especially considering what unfair weight and load you put on his shoulders to carry every night. He was there for the Cavs game. He was there for the Wizards game. Pelicans. That Pelicans was probably the worst loss of the year. And you endured that. Now you got to play the Nets tomorrow? Yeah. 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 It's not going to get easier. 
<laughs> and then you got the Grizzlies. Fun. Fun. Got them again. Dallas has to do something because this is not going to get better. They can't keep going down the same path. And the only way they're going to hear it is if people stop taking the spin, stop trying to, to take what they're selling, stop buying what they're selling, and just saying like, oh, well, you know, a lot, look at the West right now, it's kind of a jumbled, it's a log jam, you know, everybody's having these issues right now other than the best, best teams. Your goal is to be one of the best, best teams, and your goal should be how they built it, understanding how they built it, and how you can, to a degree, replicate that success. And if what you've been doing for 10 plus years hasn't been working and through 22 games you're in this juncture where you can really say you only played well, like really well in like a handful of those games, then you're missing the point. It's a marathon, sure, but you've been running on the same damn track for 10 years and you're not catching shit. I don't know. I've ranted long enough for now. Just know, I am suffering with you as I watch these. I am going to be more active because I don't know how much longer I can keep holding in this brewing fury. Just hang tight. We'll get through it together, and we'll see what this team does. If you haven't already, like the video, drop a comment below, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect. Let me know, what do you think? What, is, what does Dallas need to do, not just this year, moving forward as a franchise, what do they need to do? to right the ship. Till next time, guys. Peace. Still recording. Yep. Every legend was once a prospect. Peace.